you will apply after two weeks, two to three weeks of planting, and then when the maize wants to uh, it's about to start tasseling, you apply your fertilizer. But if you are to apply only once, that is, if you are to apply only once, you apply uh, at two to three weeks after planting. Then, what are the numbers of days to maturity and yield? That is, days of maturity and yield. The maturity varies from 60 to 120 days. That it takes uh, May 60 to 120 days to mature, depending on the variety. Then, uh, May has a yield of 1 uh, to 4 tons per hectare in Nigeria here. Yeah. In developed countries where uh, they have uh, improved variety and then uh, they employ the best uh, cultural practices where the uh, where irrigation is being used and then they use best, the best cultivar, uh, they have better yield more than that. That is, but here in Nigeria, a yield of one to four ton per hectare can be obtained with improved varieties uh, and adequate fertilizer application. Then harvesting. Let's look at harvesting of maize. Maize are uh, to be eaten uh, harvested green soon after the seed from the crop dries up. Most of the maize is usually harvested when dry, either for human consumption or for making uh, fly stock feed. Where it is not possible to dry uh, the corn properly on the field, they are harvested half dry and then they are dried or sun dried. Uh, where the maize is to be used for silage, it is harvested when uh, in full bloom, just before tasseling bloom, using the forage harvester. Then, let's look at the storage of maize. For proper preservation and prevention of loss or viability, maize grains should be stored below 15% uh, uh, percent, uh, moisture content. That is, you allow your maize to dry up to 15, uh, below 15% moisture content. Um, so as to store it and then prevent a uh, loss of viability. Then, uh, maize can be stored in cribs, bands, or aluminum uh, or concrete silos. That is, we can store our dried maize in cribs, bands, uh, and aluminum or concrete silos. Then, our, uh, what are the processing uh, or uh, utilization, let's discuss uh, maize order processing and uh, utilization. Uh, maize can be boiled or roasted, especially when grain. That is, we can consume it directly. We can to consume it directly, we can boil it or roast it, just like we usually do in uh, the various houses. Maize can also be processed into pap, cornflakes, cornmeal, livestock field, uh, feeds, popcorn. Then we can also process maize into baking flour and it's also used in breweries in the production of drinks and beer. Uh, with that, we come to the end of maize. Um, the next uh, crop we'll be looking at under the crop husbandry is the cow, and, uh, which has a botanical name, Vibna Inuculata. Uh, we'll now we'll be looking at it under the various uh, subtopics. We have the varieties. Uh, for the varieties, the improved varieties that are available include the uh, Ife Brown, if a BPC, we have the TVX 3236, we have the high T 823716, we have the right type, and then we have the creeping type. And then under climatic condition, looking at things, cowpea under climatic condition. Cowpea requires a temperature of about uh, 27 degrees Celsius to 35 degrees Celsius, and also requires a moderate evenly distributed rainfall of 715 millimeter to uh, 1500 millimeter. That is, uh, it requires uh, a considerable amount of rainfall. Now, for the soil requirements, uh, cowpea thrives optimally on well drained loamy soil or moderately fertile, of moderately, of moderately, moderate fertility because very fertile soil encourage heavy vegetative growth at the expense of seed production. That is, if your soil is too fertile, you know, all what you'll be having is the leaf, that is, uh, the vegetative growth. Whereas uh, the seed, which is our optimal goal, that is, which is our end, 
uh, which is our end goal, won't be achieved, but all we'll be having is a vegetative path. So a moderate soil, a fertile soil is uh, good enough for uh, cowpea. And he, he, uh, the cowpea itself actually helps in um, adding nutrients to the soil, that is fixing of uh, uh, nitrogen into the soil. Now we'll now be looking at the land preparation for cowpea. Cortiasis and holes are commonly used by peasant farmer, while medium or large scale farmers may employ tractor to plow or harrow the soil. Cowpea may be grown as a sow crop or intercrop with maize, sorghum, millet, or cassava. When grown solely, it is planted on flat ground, that is, you don't need to make ridges or eat. Then the planting date. In the savanna, uh, in the savanna zone, that is the northern uh, region of Nigeria, cowpea is planted between July and September, while in the southern parts of the country, it is planted from August to early September. Uh, in both cases, planting is carried out to ensure that the crop matures uh, during the dry season. That, you, that is, uh, you plant during the wet season, but it matures uh, toward the ending of the, uh, the, of, of the rainy season. That is, it matures uh, during the dry season, so as to ensure that uh, the crop matures. And then avoid mod mod modiness of the pods or grains. Then the seed drills are uh, and the spacing. A cup is propagated by seed and the, uh, the following spacing depending on the variety being planted. We have the CC, for the spacing we have the CC by 30 cm, we have the 30 by 30 cm, we have the 20 by 20 cm. If it is scraping, we have to make use of the CC by 30, but if it is a rex type, you can make use of the 20 by 20. The seed rate uh, written ranges from, um, that is the seed rate ranges from 25 to 30 kg per hectare and then 50 to 55 kilograms per hectare, depending on the spacing. If you are using a larger spacing, then you are going to have that small range, which is 25 to 30 kilograms per hectare. But for the 20 by 20 uh, centimeter spacing, or 30 by 30 centimeter spacing, then you are expected to use 50 to 55 kilograms per hectare. That is, you plant up to 50 to 55 kilograms per hectare. Now, weeding. Now we're discussing uh, cowpea under weeding. Uh, weeds can be controlled manually with the use of hose or cutlasses or with the use of herbicide. Uh, where the manual weeding is employed, it should be done within two to three weeks after planting. And second weeding is done between the fifth and sixth week after planting. Uh, the effective herbicides that are commonly suitable for cowpea production are the galax, uh, which is used as five liters per hectare, and then we have the dual, which is used as 3 liters per hectare, and then the stone, which is used as 5 liters per hectare. Now we'll be discussing at, uh, discussing at cowpea under fertilizer application. Um, when cow cowpea is planted on a fairly uh, fertile soil, uh, cowpea does not require supplementary fertilization. That is, if you plant your cowpea on a fertile soil, that is a considerable fertile soil, you don't need to supply fertilizer either in the form of organic or inorganic. But we have the fertility of the soil is very low. Then uh, potassium and uh, uh, phosphorus and potassium fertilizer or NPK fertilizer at the ratio of uh, 4, that is uh, our nitrogen will be having ratio of 4. Our NPK, that is our nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium uh, fertilizer will be having a ratio of 4 to 8 to 9 may be applied immediately after planting or at the early stage of growth. Rated. And the rating of the application is uh, 20, 250 kg per hectare. That is the uh, rate at which you are going to apply the fertilizer will be at the rate of 250 kg per hectare. And then we will now be looking at the number of days of maturity and yield. That is uh, the number of days that uh, we expect our copy to of mature. Cowpea matures between three to four months after planting. Uh, the vegetative cowpea that are harvested and eating grain takes six to seven weeks to attain maturity. The average cowpea seed yield is generally lower and ranges between 450 to 700 kilograms per hectare, which is due to insect damage. That means if you, if you can control the insect, you can have higher yield than that. 
Then the harvesting, not be looking at cowpea on the harvesting. Harvesting is really done manually when the cowpea pod is dry. That is, you have to allow your cowpea pod to get dry before harvesting. The dry cowpea pods are picked by hand two, uh, two or three times. Uh, must be promptly done. That is, you do it, you know, you can't expect all the cowpea pods to get mature and get dry at the same time. So you do it up to two or three times. And it must, it must be done promptly to avoid shattering of the dry pods. That is, if you don't want your beans, uh, the pods to split on the, on the field, you have to do it properly and uh, so as to prevent losses on the farm. Then processing. Uh, the copy pods may be threshed by beating them with sticks or on a hard surface or with a motorized thresher. That, uh, the thresher actually uh, threshes the pods and then the cow pods and then uh, removes the, uh, the, chaff, the chaff of the pods, uh, separate the chaff of the pods from the cow pea seed. Thresh seed are winnowed so as to separate the chaff of the pods from the cow pea. Then storage. And thresh cow pea seeds are stored in bags, in rumbles, in, in silos, and jute bags. Seeds are usually treated with uh, fruct fructosin or actelic insecticides to prevent insect infection. And damage. Then, what is cowpea being used for? The vegetable cowpea and the, the seed are valuable food and sources of vitamins and protein. The cowpea seeds are processed into different types of food, e.g., moi moi, akara, or kusai. Even served can be boiled and be eaten as, as a, the normal beans that we usually eat. Now, without, we've come to the end of